let's go through a series of studies on cooperation in nature. God put a number of things together that even though they now are in disarray to some degree, you can still see that originally they were designed and exercised with beautiful symmetry and beautiful purpose. So, uh, there's a nice little creature. There's a bee. Without those bees or their uh, counterparts, other insects, but the bees lead the way. Without the bees doing their job of pollination, plants would not reproduce, we would have nothing to eat, and the human race would die out. But the bee can sting you, and some people in this audience are allergic to bees to the point where if you don't get to the hospital quickly enough or some medical assistance, you could die en route. So while there's a design and a purpose, there's also a decay that's illustrated. Oh, by the way, same thing with the snakes. In the biosphere, and we are making good progress on the biosphere, we're making good progress on the lab, and in the lab we will analyze what we grow in the biosphere, comparing them to the ambient group. Watch closely. For a decade, we had a smaller biosphere online simulating the conditions before the worldwide flood of Noah's day. Under those conditions, we have greater atmospheric pressure, we have greater electromagnetic DC current, electromagnetic DC current. Under those conditions, we have slightly higher oxygen ratio, etc. That makes a tremendous difference. My wife was here earlier today. Her life was saved at Texas A&M University in a hyperbaric medical chamber where they uh, induced higher oxygen, higher atmospheric pressure for a short period of time. But they only worked with two parameters. We work with eight parameters here. Higher oxygen ratio, higher atmospheric pressure, higher electromagnetic energy, a particular temperature, particular wavelength of light, et cetera, et cetera, higher carbon dioxide. So the plants, uh, like lycopsid like club mosses that are ferns that go about 18 inches today in the fossil record, they got up to 120 feet tall. So we're going to introduce these in the biosphere, and we're going to have a lot of fun growing those. Mike Herlacher, your responsibility is to make enough space for them to grow. I don't know how you're going to do that. They're, they're going to outgrow the biosphere quickly, and that's going to be a nice problem. But all of that leads me to say this. We ran experiments with smaller chambers for an entire decade. Uh, off and on, we had Drosophila melanogaster fruit flies we ran experiments with. And we also had uh, a Chedridon contortrix and a Grotilus. Those are copperheads and rattlesnakes. We're not snake handlers around here. <laughs> but we put them in the biosphere and had a control group. Have you ever seen snake venom under scanning electron microscopic analysis? How many have? Okay, it's going to take my hands. Snake venom under scanning electron microscopic analysis looks like this, gnarled spaghetti. It's because of the sulfide bombs frayed, and that introduces the necrosis. That eats the flesh. So that basically for uh, neurotoxins and hematoxins, that's basically what's going on. But then after just four weeks in the biosphere under additional electromagnetic DC current, higher oxygen ratio, higher carbon dioxide, higher atmospheric pressure. Under those conditions, after just four weeks, the venom was structured like this. It was organized. Theoretically, that states that the venom became a serum.